thanks to these saints for edifying the body of Christ. Amen? Give them praise and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. When you have a great, great Lord to sing about. Oh, my. Oh, my. Praise the Lord. You okay? You doing okay? <laughs> Happy Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Being excited about your salvation is okay. <laughs> God has given you permission to sing praises to his name because he loves that. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of kings calls his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. That's that last song. That's just the, the chorus to that. What a, what a beautiful time and song in praise unto the Lord. Let me just bring some thought. I pray you just track in here for a moment. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, and picking up in verse number 12, let me, let me just read this through with you. It's up on the screen if you want to follow with me, but keep in mind this. In this church at Corinth, when they began, they were so thrilled. Paul stayed with them for 18 months. A church was planted on the, the gospel of Jesus Christ on this the songs that you've heard from Scripture, the blood of Jesus Christ, the redemption, the, the grave held no victory. And you think about that, the stone was rolled away. You've heard song after song after song of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yet, there was people that did not believe that. There was actually people in the church that were now contrary to such things. Oh, we need to add something other until... We have a little bit more, and then we have a little bit more. No, you don't have to add anything to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ came, died on a cross, was buried, rose again on the third day, and that's it. That's enough. Praise the Lord. That is our living hope. But Paul writes in verse number 12 through 19, a passage of Scripture here that really just really strikes at the core of the antithesis, the people that are hopeless, that don't believe. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? How is this possible that you're saying this? How are some of you who once believed now saying differently or that you didn't believe at all and you're now hopeless in your sin? Paul says, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And our preaching is also vain. Excuse me, vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ. Who he raised not up, if he so be that dead, rise not. Consider this. If it's not true that Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, then our preaching of Christ raising from the dead is a waste of time. But we know that's not true. As Paul is speaking, he's saying, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain? Is it of nothing? No, it is not. We must preach the truth because Paul says, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, are perished. What awful thought that is. That as a believer in Christ, you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. The good news, the gospel. And yet, he's saying, some of you preach that what I am still saying about the resurrection, the gospel, everything about redemption is a waste of time. Then all of this is vain? Then guess what? This verse which strikes so hard to the soul and the heart and the mind of the believer when you read this. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of all, we are of all men most miserable. Which is really saying in summarization of the last few verses, if all of this is a lie and Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, then we just believe in Jesus. We believe in Christ as a good man. He did miracles. 
He told nice stories. He healed people. And he died and stayed in the grave. And he's a wonderful sacrifice. You and I are miserable. And the people, again, that are hopeless, they're dead in their sins already, and they're going to the grave with no hope. That's the way I was before I got saved. When you look up on the screen and see that statement, our living hope, that's a declaration that he is the risen Savior and the conquering King. Every song that meant anything that you heard this morning was from Scripture. It's scripture-based. It's songs that are declaring the glory of God, and they are raising up the name of Jesus Christ where it belongs in his preeminence and is edifying and building up all of you and saying, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. I'm a believer in you, Jesus. I do not have hopelessness. I have hope in you, Jesus. But there's a lot of people that don't know what hope means. Hope, it says up on the screen. A simple definition, really not too complicated. To wait for salvation with joy and full confidence, hopefully to trust in, to expect or be expectant, hope. The Bible says that there are three great things, 1 Corinthians 13, faith, hope, and charity, love. And of these three The Bible says that charity really is the one that's the greatest. But in those three that are named faith, the faith in Jesus Christ, the hope that's in Jesus Christ, the charity, the love that you have in Jesus Christ, this is the hope that we have and we celebrate. But today, maybe you're hopeless. Never, just never assume in a room Never assume in your workplace. Never assume in a bunch of people that are gathered together at a church service that are not people that are saying, that hope stuff, I'm living a life of hopelessness. I have no hope when I die. I, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I lived a life where I was hopeless. I was taught that you couldn't have hope. And it could be eternal and set and secure. No, I was taught that you could have hope one day, but if you did a bunch of stuff wrong the next day, then you didn't have hope and you lost it. What kind of God is that? I was taught by a religious set of rules that hope was okay, but if you really don't do all the things that you've got to do, then you are going to be hopeless. I was hopeless in my sin for years as an adult as someone showed me the Bible That hope can be in Jesus Christ. And I didn't need to be most miserable by just believing in what he was as a man. But rather he's the risen Savior. He is Jesus Christ. Believe. Some people say, I I believe in a lot of things. And I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Guess what? Has it ever been a matter of your heart? Or has it always been a cerebral exercise for you? I believe in God's stuff. You've got to believe that. People, all these 40-something people got up here and got excited, and they sung. They, I've got to believe in something. Do you really believe for yourself personally that Jesus Christ came to redeem your soul? Or are you thinking that around this room that that's nice for everybody else, but for me, I, I don't know. Believe. To think, to be true, to be persuaded of, to place confidence in. Who are you placing confidence in today? As a believer, you believe. But do you live like you believe? You put your faith and trust one day in the Lord, but do you live like you believe? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you believe in your heart? Or again, is it something that's an intellectual thought? It's just something in my mind. I get it. I heard it. I went to church for a few years. Somebody made me say a prayer. I said, yeah, I believe. And I walked away, but my heart was still dark. Maybe that's you today. Maybe this church gathering stuff sounds really nice, but you've never believed with your heart. 
Jesus Christ. For those of you that have, you know you were baptized or sunk or immersed into Jesus and you became a new creature and you became alive. And all these people here that are singing on the stage, they're alive. And they speak of the living Jesus Christ, which goes to my last word, live. What does it mean? Now i got to tell you, I went to school to be an English teacher. But obviously, by the way I speak, I'm not very good. So I went to phys ed. Being a gym teacher is fun, isn't it? Here's the meaning of live. To be among the living. You didn't know that I was that smart. I looked it up and that's in the dictionary. In the concordance. You can see why I'm not an English teacher. The Bible says in Romans 14 to the believer, hope, the antithesis of hope is hopelessness. Believe, the antithesis of to believe or have belief is to have no belief, of course. To live, the opposite of to live is to die. Are you alive today as a believer? The Bible says in Romans 14, for whether we live, believers, believers in Jesus Christ, you called on the name to save you, you know that you're born again, you know that he is your savior. It says, we live unto the Lord. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Are you the Lord's today? Do you belong to the Lord today? That's what's before you. You heard songs again of blood, the blood of Jesus. You heard songs of redemption, the redemption of Jesus Christ. Forgiveness, grace, all oh, that song, mercy, oh goodness. I went through six tissues in both services over that one. You see, it's the gospel. It's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's found in those first four verses of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where we just had read the contrary side of it. But those first four verses of 1 Corinthians 15 and then after that it says that Jesus was seen of countless people which proves that he's raised from the dead and Paul's given that account but yet people rejected the gospel. People were preaching another gospel. They were preaching that Jesus wasn't raised from the dead. But it says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4, up on the screen it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. The word gospel, again, I said it earlier, good news. I'm telling you some good news here. There's a lot of bad news around. I'm just going to tell you good news. You say, well, I'm a believer in the good news. Good. Then do ever people know the good news that you have? Or do you start out a story and say, hey, I've got new, good news and bad news. And you always tell people bad news. Which one do you want first? I don't want to hear any bad news. I've heard enough bad news all my life. Could you just give me some good news? Well, here's the good news. By which also you're saved by the gospel he references early. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Have you forgotten? You believed in vain? Was it nothing? Did it not mean anything? Maybe that's you as a believer today. And may it not go any further. In your life, may you not be living a life of vanity and nothingness. May you not look at this scripture and go, that's nice. Because it says in verse number three, Paul clearly saying, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. You have sinned and Christ had to die for them because God requires a sacrifice. For the payment of the sin and the only, only sacrifice is Jesus' perfect blood. And it had to be shed on the cross. The sacrifice is beautiful. But he says there has to be more. And that he was buried. Buried. 
all that went to the grave and taking it to lead captivity captive. On the third day, he rose from the dead, and it says, according to the Scriptures, he rose again the third day. That's it. That's the good news. Why do you need good news? Because all around you, bad news. And the devil wants to give you some bad news. You're not good enough to be saved. That's not what the Bible teaches. Because you don't have to be good enough. You just need to be in a place where you are repentant and say, I know I'm not good enough. I need Jesus. I just want to ask you a couple things and I'll be done. The gospel. You, who are believers today, you know who you are. You accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. You know. Do you live daily in the gospel? Maybe this Easter, maybe this Resurrection Sunday is finally to say, you know, I live in bad news all day long. I mean, I'm surrounded by it because I have to live in the world, but you don't have to be of the world. You can live the good news of Jesus Christ in your life every day. It's the gospel. This gets you fired up. Well, I'm going to go out the door and let lose my fire. We'll follow Dwayne around, man. He's thinking hopping for all of us. That's the burden and blessing of his family members, right? It's okay. But the second thing I ask you is this in the gospel, you who are hopeless today, you know that if you took your last breath while you're going out to the car, you don't know. You're hopeless. I was like that until the summer of my 24th year on this earth. 40 years later, I didn't have a clue. I called on the name of Jesus. Because I believed in my heart for the first time ever. I believed in my heart. I always believed here, but I never believed here. So I put up on the screen these three simple statements up there, the gospel. Your hope is in Jesus Christ. You believe or have belief in your heart. Life, then, as a believer, is in the gospel every day. Here's your invitation. I'm going to invite you. Here's your invitation. To the Lord right in your seat today. Will you receive Jesus as your Savior today? Will you? Maybe you need to. This invitation is for you and for those that are believers. I'd ask you to pray. And maybe this is a time today on this Sunday where you say, I'm just going to live in the gospel every day, even when the bad stuff comes. Because I know I have a living hope. His name is Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads for a word of prayer and a time for invitation with you and the Lord? Some soft music playing in the background. Here's your invitation. If you're lost today and you're hopeless, I invite you to call in the name of the Lord today. Again, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves, but the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Who are you going to put your faith in today, you or him? I promise you, if you call in the name of the Lord to save you, if you believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, if you confess with your mouth and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, I know all of a sudden comes short of the glory of God, and I need your redemptive power in your blood. I need the stone is rolled away power in my life to save me. Very simply, you can say this. God, today, I'm making things right with you and calling on your son, Jesus, to save me. I know I can't save myself. I know that right now I'm hopeless, but I'm trusting in you right now, and I'm calling on your name, Jesus, and I'm believing in my heart that God had raised from the dead. I'm turning from my old way, and I'm turning to whatever you have for me It's for you to save my soul. And that's all I'm doing today. Please give me new life. With heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe one of you have done that this morning. I'd love for you to share that with me. 